What's going on, fellas? I've got a 2002 F-150 here, and it's got really common problems with the idle air control valve. Uh, some common symptoms that I've noticed personally on my vehicle is uh, occasionally when I go to start it, it will rev way too high at first and then drop down. Uh, but that's not the only thing I've noticed. Uh, there's some unusual things that happen when I drive as well. Mostly when I'm cruising down the road and uh, when I come to a stop, it'll act like it doesn't want to stop, like it's still accelerating. And uh, what I found is if I actually shift my car into neutral as I'm driving, the RPMs will spike up. And I'll show you that here. So I'm cruising on the highway, going about 60, and I'm giving it slight gas right now. I'm slightly accelerating. Uh, when I let off the gas, I don't see the tachometer drop one bit and the truck still kind of feels like it's pulling a little bit. And you'll notice if I shift into neutral, the RPM will spike up a little bit, hang out, and then drop. Uh, and it drops slowly. Uh, what I think is actually happening is there's a spring inside of the idle air control valve, and I think it gets weak, and it's not able to push back against the flow of, um, the flow of air that's going through it. So I'm gonna show you real quick how to get that valve changed. So to change this valve, it's real simple. All you need is an eight millimeter tool, like a uh, socket with a ratchet, or you could even use a wrench, I suppose, if you wanted to. But uh, let me just pull over here real quick and I'll show you. So I've got my uh, new idle air control valve and it came with the gasket as well. So go ahead and pop the hood. So on most of these trucks, there will be a cover here. Um, I've, I've removed mine, so I just don't, I don't run with the cover. If yours still has the cover, there's two 10 millimeter bolts here and here that you've got to remove, as well as one here. This is the idle air control valve itself. You can just unplug it by pushing on this pin and pulling straight back. And there are two eight millimeter bolts, one on either side. So they just come right out, nothing to it. Just pulling straight up. And you can see the spring in there. I think that's what happens on these, the spring gets weak. Or sometimes the uh, they call it a pintle, the pintle will get stuck. This one's actually been replaced once before. And there's my old gasket. Ideally, this would just come off without tearing. Whatever you do, you don't want to drop any pieces of the new gasket down into the engine. A razor blade may be helpful to you. But yeah, this one's mostly coming off clean. I have to use a, uh, I don't have a razor on me, but I've got the next best thing. I've got my Leatherman gasket scraper. If you don't get all of the old gasket off, you can actually cause a vacuum leak and you'll end up with a truck that's running worse than it was before. So yeah, that's pretty good. Gonna throw my new gasket on there, my new part. What I'm using is, uh, the brand is BWD. It's sold by Advance. And it, it has a lifetime warranty, which is great because it's probably gonna fail again. Go ahead and screw these on. The bolts really don't have to be all that tight. And while you're here, you may want to inspect, um, there's actually a pass, uh, path just for the air 
that is metered through the idle air control valve. Uh, Fords are really uh, common for doing that. They'll have a, um, a split off of your intake and they'll have a path just for the air for the idle air control valve. So you're gonna wanna look, you know, see if there's any cracks in these hoses there. Another common failure point for these Fords is the uh, PCV, uh, the PCV hoses. There's one right here, comes off of this boot. There's an elbow and then it goes to your valve cover here. Uh, these boots can splat, uh, split or come off. Um, the one that fails the most is this one here. It goes on the passenger side valve cover and it goes over to the back of the intake there. And uh, that one splits as well. I've actually replaced that one. I used a uh, genuine Ford part from the dealership. It really uh, it was reasonably priced. So yeah, that's about it. There's no relearn procedure needed. Uh, you just throw the new part on there and fire it up and see how it does. Oh, yeah, let's see. Oh yeah. It may do a little bit of a relearn, but um, I expect it's gonna be riding much better. So yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions.